Hey and welcome to Sekiro the Ultimate Guide. Now if this is your first time watching any of these videos then I'd ask for a minute or so of your time just so I can explain how to use this guide and what it's about. Essentially this guide is entirely complete and it will help you get a full platinum for Sekiro. It covers all NPC quests that are relevant, all items, a best path through the game and also specifically strategies to get you through the game with the path of least resistance. Remember that this guide is supposed to be used as a full guide but you, could, you can use it for specific areas if you need to but if you're confused about how you know we are at a certain point or doing a certain thing, chances are the answer is in a previous episode. When it comes to boss battles, we really only show you the easiest method that we could find based on our perspective. If you want to fight the boss differently, it's up to you in this case to find a different and harder strategy. Now, if you have a good tip or have a question, leave them in the comments and I'll add them to a pinned post. That way this guide can constantly get better or more efficient. So if you have a question, check the pinned post first. If you do have a tip, please leave a timestamp so I can find the bit that you're talking about. Also, please bear in mind that this guide is taking me literally hundreds of hours to make, so if you enjoyed the video, the least you could do is give it a like. If you really enjoyed it, perhaps give us a sub! And if you really, really enjoyed it, you can support the channel on our Patreon if you're feeling generous, or perhaps sub to us on our Twitch, that's another good option. Now on to the guide. Welcome back to Skiro Ultimate Guide, and today it is like, we are wrapping up all of the headless that we've not, well, we've not killed any of them. And then we're also wrapping up all the optional stuff and the swimming parts today. And then that way it is just pure progress going forward. So, puppeteer ninjutsu? Yeah, I don't know why I do this here. For banter? Oh, I think there's like a, the slightest bit of like farming or something like that. <laughs> there was, I know there was definitely a reason. Oh, I needed, you need like 200 gold or just something like totally ineffectual. You need like the tiniest bit of gold for some reason. I cannot fucking remember why. Oh, well, he just comes over to you like, are you pleased, master? But well, I'm sure that bit will be relevant in a second. I genuinely can't remember why we had to do that. Maybe you just wanted to show them it. Maybe. So there's three... Piranha. Yeah, kill them, I guess. I mean, it's not going to be an issue. And then there's an item here, which is a pacifying agent. Oh, precious bait. Okay. So we need that for a quest, however... It's a carp skill waiting to happen. Yeah, pretty much. Now, we need that... Uh, yeah, I guess that's the, the best thing about the quest, but the actual NPC part of the quest, you don't... You, again, you get nothing. Yeah. No, there is a bait that you get from NPCs, and then they become the fish. Oh, sure, yeah, that's true. Okay, so we're sneaking around here, and then we're going to get one of these carps. Now, this is the carps that we've got scales from, but now they're underwater, they're significantly more annoying... And, uh, aye, it is what it is. But this is essentially the river that leads back to the start of Mibu Village, and we're just following it back the way. Your ability to dash underwater makes about as much sense as your ability to fall 300 feet and then miraculously survive because you have a grappling hook. This is correct. Uh, also, you just can breathe underwater. Uh, I mean, we get the power to do it, so it is what it is. What, did the fucking corrupted monk give you a set of gills or something? Uh, yeah, literally. Is that that red-eyed fish is just like, I don't give a fuck. So we need the red-eyed fish for a quest. Um, yeah. There's also an interesting uh, thing to do with the quest, which I discovered that makes it significantly fucking easier, and it's unbelievable you can do it. So um, I would also say, uh, right, I'll get to the quest when we get to it. The point is, is we're just clearing up the carps here, right? And then there is a prayer bead? Probably. It's always a prayer bead. Aye, there we go. So I guess you can't even remember if we got a prayer bead from the monk or not, but we're just going to wrap up all the diving sections that we've like essentially missed before this part of the game. I think you got a prayer bead and the underwater breathing technique. I think. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Doesn't really matter. You just level up when we do. Because you got you got a prayer bead from the house. Oh, so that was the last one that we did. Yeah. So you also had a prayer bead from that attic in the house as well. So immediately we're going to upload, we're upload, <laughs> um, upgrade our physical attributes and now because that way. For doing the headlesses, we're gonna have more HP. Headless eye. Headless eye. Keep for fucking forgetting that. So now we are at the Hirata estate, and we're just gonna get like there's like two areas where there's some fish that we need to kill to get some scales, I guess. See, Spider-Man could survive the whole like web swinging after falling like hundreds of feet thing because he had superpowers, and like he was a Spider-Man. But this guy, how does he do it? Well, he must have superpowers as well. Was he bit by a radioactive wolf? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Like, that, that, you, people think this is in the past or whatever. This is actually in the future. It's so far in the future they forgot about electricity. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah. So there's a carp here. So there's a carp on this side and there's a carp on the other side. Uh, one on one side of the pot man, one on the other side. So, again, if they run away, they will, they will like, respawn immediately. You don't need to quit out and go back in on, like, Dark Souls and Demon Souls and stuff, but... Um, Aye, so you can kind of like lock them into the wall that they're like next to, I guess, depending on the angle that you come at them from. Oh yeah, you basically don't want to really spend your carp skills on anything at uh, the moment. Yeah, because we're going to save up to get the mask fragments. And if you complete the carp quest line, you know there's like not really a way to get more scales, I guess. So there you go there. Now with the scales that we got, we bought one of the mask fragments off this guy. We're going to get the other mask fragment off the other pot guy. And then the peddler at the abandoned dungeon sells the last part of the mask fragment. And if you have 5,000 gold by the time you have the second mask fragment, then it means that you can spend five skill points to upgrade your attack. That's what it does. Just while we're here talking about it. Well, they don't definitely have enough to do it because you had like 10 large coin purses. Uh, that's nah, 10, so that's 10,000. By the time we get to it, um, so, okay, no, so. For the, for the piece from the dungeon, like at this point in the game, they'll, they probably have enough light coin purses and heavy coin purses stacked nope. together to buy it. No? Nah, no. It's only 5,000 or something. Like, if you've been sucking up uh, coins from enemies and banking them, then yeah. Yeah. So hopefully you've just been paying attention to what we've been doing while we've been talking about the mask fragment. Uh, we do assume in these guides, by the way, that you can understand to replicate what we are doing as we're talking about other stuff. But just to reiterate, we went to the ape's boss room and in that little bit of the water there's like a precious bait. And then also there was uh, one other carp that we had missed in the Hirata state that's underwater from the second bonfire. So now we are again in... Uh, Sunken Valley, and we have went back to where the snake attacked us initially, but now the snake's dead, so it won't attack us, and we can, like, go underwater and get the, the items. So we went around the back way from that bit from the left, like the kind of rock in the middle of the water, and killed one of the carps. And there's another one floating about in the middle. Luckily, we got we got lucky there, and he went straight into a wall, he's fisher. I think they just vanish anyway. These fish are arguably less smart than real fish. They do the same thing as Titanite lizards in Souls games where they just vanish after they run for a while. Yeah, it's true. So so there's a Gatchin Sugar down here as well. And uh, I think there's maybe one other item. Nope. No, I guess not. Guess That's not. you. So there's an item down there at the end there. There's Gatchin Sugar down there. And you saw us pick up the sugar as well. So that's it for this area, and now I think we are off to Simple Temple, I think. Yeah, so we are at this part. After where you fought Big Eye on Robert? Yep. And uh, we just, so we've already killed the, um, the carp that was in this pool, because they're not underwater. And if you haven't already gotten it by this point, if you somehow haven't gotten it, the, um, one of the, the the texts that you need for a quest or something is like underwater here, but you we've already got it. So, yeah. so now this is the quest I was talking about. And by the way, you want to do this video in this exact order. So we are going underwater here. This is from the abandoned dungeon, and we are coming to pick up the coin purses here. So I know that we needed those coin purses for something. I, I do remember that, but I cannot remember why. They are relevant though. Uh, and I think that the the f small 200 coins that I got right at the start of the video was made irrelevant by forgetting that you can come here first and get those coin purses underwater. <coughs> but, so this allows us to come to this part. Which is Dosaku's cell. Yeah. And we can open up this bit here. And now we get to finish off the rest of this guy's quest. So, uh, we speak to him. So we give him the red carp eyes, uh, which he needed. And then he gives us some grave wax, which is some upgrade materials, which is obviously good. So now we go and rest, presumably. To advance his quest line, probably. I think, so you have to fight him and you have to fight the guy that you sent here. And they're both very, very strong. It's 
Well, it's a bad idea to send the uh, the guy from Senpu Temple. Cause uh, he's... So you get less and then you fight a stronger guy. Yeah. So now we are... So yeah, at this point, like, at this point, I don't even... Who the fuck even is Dosaku? Dosaku's his master. Yeah, but where is he? He's, he's not dead. in there. He's dead. Yeah, but was it even, like, a, a... He's insane. I mean, he's obviously insane, sure. So after like, so... we've rested and eavesdropped, then we go back again and... So that's Dosaku's cell, which implies that Dosaku's body's in there. So Dojin is probably screaming at Dosaku's body because he's mentally insane. Yeah, I mean... He's just broken entirely. So... At this point, yeah, um, after you've eavesdropped, this then spawns the next part of the quest where the guy that you sent here initially from Undead, uh, from this place, um, he's now here. But bafflingly, you can backstab him with a Gatchin Sugar. And I cannot stress enough how difficult he is. He just didn't hear those logs going all over yeah. the place, the pots or anything like that, you know? So if it fucks up, and it can fuck up, and he also, he's one of those guys that, like, drops the unique item, it doesn't go straight to your inventory. So you get the you get the red lump from him, which is, like, a potent healing item. Now, like I said, it can fuck up, but I'm telling you that doing this is a hell of a lot fucking easier than um, trying to fight him legitimately. You can, like, use the Axe R1 method, but even at that, he still puts up some fight. He's got so much health and he hits like a truck. Because you're probably meant to do this quest line at the end of the game when you have, like, yeah, pro way more attack power. Possibly. You could also absolutely just save this for the end of the game. You really don't yeah. need to. So we're just speaking to him and nothing. I think now all you need to do is just rest again and then he just, he moves. Yeah. But it's definitely worth coming here for the coin purses. I get, I know the coin purses are relevant for, like, I used to do this part of the guide right at the end of this episode, but then I realised that if you do it at this point, the coin purses you get are relevant. I can't remember why, but I'm sure, I'm sure it'll show up in the rest of the video. I really should have fucking looked, looked forward to see, but it'll be a surprise for both of us. Like, like, I mean, this guide should just be you emulating exactly what we're doing. You don't really even need the commentary, like the commentary. But... Again, we can still backstab this guy and, like, the last guy. Um, His body's still here. Yeah. Bah it's just insane that you can do this. It really is fucking insane. I just don't He's get it. He's looking right at you. I know. I know. And then you get his red lump. Now, the thing, you can actually probably go, I'm not sure if you can, but you can probably go in the water and actually just jump up the other bit of the cliff and get him that way. You, you probably don't even need to follow the... The wall right around. You could probably, you know, I'll probably just walk right in front of him. I, maybe. I've not even tried it because I wasn't wanting to risk it, but clearly you can get right next to him and he won't even see you. So it's pretty good. He must have been like right on the edge of his view cone. So, so that's it for all the diving sections. Now it is on to the headless no, part. There's another water headless, so there's one more dive. Uh, so that's in the next part. Ah. That's in uh, Ashina Castle, which we're just going to. So, so this is the first. Um, the first place you want to come to. Now, again, after you defeated the uh, Guardian Ape. So this is Sunken Valley. Yeah. In the Guardian Ape's boss room, you come and fight this Seashaman Warrior. Now, this guy is essentially, like, the hardest one, technically, because he gives you the Malcontents ring, and then you use that to upgrade the Finger Whistle, which stuns these guys for a period of time, and then it lets you do, like, a certain combo chain on them, and it just makes it a hell of a lot easier. So you can't get the backstab, but you can just run in an R1 spam with Divine Confetti. Uh, make sure you have the shield on as well, the purple umbral shield. Yeah, so this is why you need it. Now, he will like resp he will spawn in like the left or the right part of the map. Um, like, kind of like randomly, I suppose. But he will charge up this big beam, and that's... Like, the thing is, is that the, the shield will like negate all of the damage. So once you do enough damage to him... He'll, like, kind of be stunned, as you can see, and then he'll block your next attack, and then after that, he'll move away. So it's really annoying that you can't just, like, stun chain him, but after he does the big, um, the big beam attack, that's, like, your chance to, like, run in and start hitting him. Yep, just make sure you have pacifying agents and stuff like that in case he starts building terror, you run into a couple of orbs. They're not really much of a problem now that you have this shield. Yeah. Now, I've also tried doing the, um... Call it the 
So that's why you use the shield, because the beam tracks. Yeah. It's not just, like, you can't just strafe it, it will track. You also kind of need the Define Confetti to be able to do any damage to these guys. Like, you can do damage without it, but it's very, very little. Your damage is cut in half, at least. Now, you can also run just fast enough. Now, another thing as well is, if you have uh, Projected Force... Now, here's actually a bit of an issue here. If you have Projected Force, and you, have, you press R1 with the hat up, you will do the Projected Force hat attack. But if you have Divine Confetti on, it will take the Divine Confetti off you. So what you want to do is use the hat, get up close, and then when that attack finishes, um, release R2 to come out of the hat attack, or like come out of the hat blocking animation, and then start attacking. You, it, it's probably going to be a bit finicky, and you can indeed just like beat him down with using the um, holding in R2, and then using R1 after you've blocked the attack, like as you can see what we're doing. But if you have the Divine Confetti on, the problem is, is when you use the Projected Force, it removes it. And it's just kind of more beneficial to just go ham on him with the with the sword with the Divine Confetti on it. But so, if, you're doing, if your Divine Confetti does run out, it does seem that the shield's follow-up attack with Projected Force does a good chunk of damage. Yeah, exactly. Anyway. exactly. As if it gives you like Divine Confetti for one attack. Yeah, exactly. So you don't need Divine Confetti to beat these guys. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Temple and upgrade the Malcontents ring. Now, this makes the Headless fights so much easier. I can't stress this enough. Because there's like a bit of a... The headlesses are really, really tough, but there is a way of like semi-cheesing them just by like using the right item at the right time and like being kind of conservative with like how you hit them and what blocks you do. Like there's no quick way of beating them, but there's just like an efficient way of beating them. So now we've got the Malcontents ring and what this does is it like you ring it and it will stun the headless. Now it's a little bit iffy for the Seashaman Warriors, but it is what it is. You have the shield for the Seashaman Warriors anyway. So now we went to the abandoned dungeon. For the second Seashaman Warrior. Yeah. Of three, right? So you'll probably remember this guy from like part five or six. You may get killed by him when you were down here by yourself in the dungeon. Yeah. So I get to show you the Malcontent string, but it is semi... Like, it does work for this guy, it's just a little less good than what it is for the Headless. So you can just, like... Yeah, so I, what I've done there was... Now, there's a weird thing that fucked up here, I don't know what it is, but after this initial attack, it kind of builds up this terror aura or something like that, and it's kind of fucking weird. But, um, so try maybe his attack went invisible because you stunned him while he was channeling. Yeah, maybe it was something like that, actually. Oh. So he showed up and, he, and I thought he was going to go to that area, went over there. So that was, like, a bit annoying. But, I mean, it's okay because you can avoid those attacks. Just by using infinite sprint. Now, accident... Like, so, I mean, at the very least, you I got the... You lost the divine confetti, but you got the visceral. Exactly, exactly. You, you will probably end up like me where... You will just accidentally like have the hat out and then be trying to hit him so quickly that you just accidentally use the projected force attack. And it's quite annoying because you can't like take the projected force attack off. But yeah, if it was like an ninjutsu, that'd be good. So what you saw there was like I attacked him a bunch of times, um, and then it, it went into like the stun animation. I used the malcontents ring, so instead of him blocking the attack and then fading away, he just got stunned again and then I went and done the combo. So that's like the ideal scenario that you're trying to replicate. And then the ceremonial tanto is basically a bloodborne item. You sacrifice some health and gain some emblems. Yeah, it's actually a really useful item, which is why we kind of getting it just now. It's a shame it takes you so long to get the purple shield. Could oh, I think that that's why one. we needed to pick up those coins so we could upgrade the ring. Oh yeah, those no, last coins are what we needed. Yep. There you go. It all came around in the end. So this is the first headless. Now you want to beat the headless in this order because this is the easiest headless as it turns out. They aren't all of the same difficulty. So this is like the first one and so, it's like the easiest one. Has the least health. Going to the Demon Bell Temple, taking the ninja door. And we're back in the headless's cave. Yeah. So again, get your Divine Confetti ready, get your Pacifying Agents ready and put on the malcontent ring. And when Headless disappears, just run. <laughs> so, put on the Vingfetti and 
what you're looking to do is you can pretty much kill him in like two combos. You can kill this one in two combos anyway. So, we ring it and then he gets like, uh, like staggered and then you hit him enough times and because he's the easiest one and you're doing enough damage to him, you then like stun him but then you keep hitting him and that's because he's got the lowest health. At this point with your stats and stuff, you can just do him in one combo. Now, every time you stun him with the malcontents ring, the second time he'll be stunned for less time, but again, you're doing so much damage and his like recovery animations are so slow that with this one, you can just immediately get him in two combos. However, the other ones have more HP and you can't do them in two combos. And you've just got an infinite to use Echo Sugar. Yeah, so this is like the, sh like you said, the sugars except they uh, take up some emblems to use. It's like two or three, something like that. Yeah, and they're infinite use instead of just whatever you have on you. So now we are going to do the Headless in Mibu Village. You'd think the Headless in Sunken Valley would be the next hardest one up, but it's actually this one. The hardest one's probably the castle. Uh, or Dragon Song Palace. Yeah, yeah, the, the one underwater. Palace, yeah. yeah, that one's really fucking bad. Like, the one underwater is, like, is harder, but it's also harder in a different way as well. Yeah, the, the one that in Fountainhead in particular. Because the other one underwater is, what, Ashna Castle? So get the Malcontent Ring ready, get the Divine Confetti ready, go in, stun him, and as you'll see, you won't be able to kill him in uh, one full combo uh, like the last one. See, he was able to recover there without being stunned because his like stun ratio. Maybe if you had like one more like tech of attack power. Yeah, so theoretically if you came here later or whatever, or maybe if you equip an Akko Sugar, you might be able to get him in one combo. You just got Akko specialty and you didn't even use it. Oh, you got teared. Yeah, yeah. So try and not let that happen. But again, you know, it's you know you've got the revive, so it's not the biggest issue if something like this happens. Now my aqua sugar wasn't on, but basically all you need to do is just be kind of wary about what he's doing, and then you can just like fire at the shield, and then accidentally lose your divine confetti. Yeah. So again, you don't want to use the projected force attack. Or I mean, it's not the worst thing ever because. It's only one emblem to put the shield out, and hence it's only one emblem to use the projected force attack with the shield. So you can get rid of like one of his health bars and then do the next health bar like this. Pretty sure we do that for the next headless anyway. Also, if you time it well, the first block with the shield can also count as a deflect, building posture. Yeah, it's true. So then we get the infinite gatch in Spiritfall. Uh, so that's pretty cool. You can deflect Headless's attacks, by the way, but he'll still tick up Terror through the deflect. Yeah, yeah. But he won't do damage to you. But then when your Terror bar fills, you're just dead anyway. You have a heart attack or some shit. So here we are in the Sunken Valley, and this is like from the one that's just after Ashina Castle. Yeah, I remember this Headless. It's over by the shrine. Yeah, this one's really tough. Initially, I had it that... For some reason, you come here first and get the items first, and then you go upgrade something, but, like, this is, now you don't need to do that anymore. I managed to, like, uh, streamline the whole thing. Yeah, I remember this head. It's like an underwater, like, little temple room. So yeah, it's actually with... pretty cool. Like, this part of the yeah. game is, like, very, very missable. Shame you only have to come here twice. Yeah. Once yeah. for the headless and once for the prayer bait. I seem so, to remember spirits being here as well. Nah. No, I'm sure there's a, there's a way to get, like, those guys from Ash in a Castle, the ones in the robes. There's a way to get a few of those ghosts to spawn here, I'm pretty sure. Well, if it is the case, it's certainly not relevant. It's a pain in the ass, because I remember doing it. So, this one is significantly harder than the other ones. So again, you could, you could just leave this to later if you wanted, but it is possible to do. It's not like it's... It's not like it's impossible, it's just annoying. It's one of those ones where, like, it's very easy to fuck up and it looks very sloppy, but the point is, is that you can still do it. So, go in, put the Divine Confetti on, Malcontents, ring him, stun him, and then go ham. Put in your Ceremonial Tanto to use as well. Because you gave yourself the uh, plus four emblems. Yeah, just in case. So the cool thing is, is we do manage to get the uh, the cool one combo on him. Almost managed to like you really got style on him. You got a deflect on that that shield block, by the way. I don't know what happened there. I feel I feel you like I was blocking. blocking. Yeah, you were blocking. 
But I must have taken. He terrored you. Did he terror me? Well, I think so. No, he didn't. It, it, it was just my health to zero. He damaged. Oh, I guess he damaged you through a block, but I deflect you take no damage. So, yeah, there we go again. Use the stun, but again, the stun will be significantly less this time. I, didn't, I really didn't want to take the damage there. So one more hit would have stunned him. So if you go too far away from Headless, he has like these little projectile wiggly worm things that he fires out that just one shot you if you get hit by it. Yeah, it's pretty bad. But this was actually a really good run for the Headless. This was like yeah. a textbook um, how you should really be trying to take care of this guy. He didn't vanish or anything during the fight, so that's pretty good. If he vanishes, he will try and appear behind you and grab you. So just look out for that and prepare to like dodge and jump. Oh out of the sure, way. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that grab attack uh, does quite a good chunk of damage. It's definitely a good thing to mention, actually. Like that, like if he vanishes, definitely just like, you know, wiggle the camera about till you can see where he's coming from and move the fuck he'll, away. He'll always appear like behind you. Yeah, yeah. So try and like move forward, I guess. Yeah. And uh, that is it for all the headlesses. Um, With that, you should have some few. You have like a few spare skill points to spend as well, because the headless gives you loads of skill points. Yeah, gives you a good chunk of experience. So we are going to upgrade our healing, which is going to be like that's pretty much like the more you heal, effectively it gives you more health overall. So certainly a good thing to get. And the next big boss that's coming up is um, a really really major one that could pr could actually prove to be a bit of an issue for some of you guys. So you'll definitely want to. Stick about for that one. But aye, hopefully this part was useful. Tons of little hidden secret items. And uh, I guess we will see you in the next part. Catch you guys later.